Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. Have you ever wondered how Cain and Abel, the first sons of Adam and Eve, could have had wives and children if Adam and Eve were the only progenitors of humanity? This question may seem like a puzzle, but as we delve into the Bible's subtleties, we uncover fascinating answers that can clarify this apparent mystery. In this video, we will discover the answer, and you can be sure it will be surprising. So, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's dive into The True Wife of Cain and How She Emerged. Cain, a central figure in biblical narratives, is presented as the firstborn of Adam and Eve, the first humans created by God. His origin is deeply connected to the dawn of humanity, being an essential part of the creation story. The relationship between Cain and his brother Abel is marked by an episode of sacrifice. On one occasion, both offered gifts to God, but divine acceptance fell only upon Abel's offerings, while Cain's were rejected. The exact reason for this rejection is not clearly explained in the biblical narrative, which has led to various interpretations over the centuries. Some suggest that the nature of the offerings, or Cain's attitude of heart, may have influenced God's choice. This rejection aroused negative feelings in Cain, culminating in the terrible act of fratricide. Consumed by anger and jealousy, Cain kills Abel, triggering the first recorded human tragedy in the Bible. In response to Cain's nefarious act, God curses him, condemning him to a life of exile and wandering. The curse not only symbolizes separation from God, but also carries the weight of moral and spiritual responsibility for his actions. Cain's curse is deeply tied to Abel's murder, reflecting the gravity of sin and serving as a reminder that human choices have profound and lasting implications. After being cursed and exiled, the biblical narrative reveals that Cain's life follows a path marked by solitude and distance from God. He becomes a wanderer, roaming the earth without a permanent home. This exile represents not only a physical punishment, but also a spiritual separation distancing Cain from God's direct presence. The Bible recounts that Cain expresses concern about the weight of his curse, fearing being killed by others who might encounter him. In response to this distress, God places a mark on Cain to protect him from retribution. This mark serves as a sign of divine protection, ensuring that anyone who encounters Cain will not harm him. Cain's wandering life is marked by a profound emotional burden, remorse, and the solitude resulting from his actions. Although he received divine protection, Cain's condition as an exile serves as a constant reminder of the consequences of his sin and separation from God. In Genesis 4, 16, 17, we read, So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain knew his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain was then building a city, and he named it after his son Enoch. The Bible tells us that Cain had a wife, and they had a son named Enoch. Additionally, the verse highlights that Cain built a city, which he named after his son Enoch. The construction of the city marks a crucial point in the narrative, symbolizing the beginning of the establishment of the first human communities. However, this is where uncertainties begin to appear. The biblical text does not offer clear details about how or with whom Cain married. In verse 17, we read only that Cain knew his wife, leaving the origin of this wife shrouded in mystery. The possibility that other human beings existed at the time of Cain, beyond Adam, Eve, Cain and Abel, emerges as an interpretation that attempts to fill the gaps left by the biblical text, addressing questions about the expansion of the human population. In this context of uncertainties, various theories and interpretations have developed over time, each trying to provide answers to these intriguing questions. In some Jewish traditions, Kalima, also known as Avan, is identified as Cain's wife, the firstborn of Adam and Eve. These secondary sources, such as the Book of Jubilees, offer a richer and more detailed perspective on the early days of humanity and the descendants of Adam and Eve. Expanding our understanding of these biblical figures and their contributions to the propagation of the human race. Although her name does not appear in the Bible, she is mentioned in apocryphal texts like the Book of Jubilees. The etymology of Kelima is often associated with Hebrew or Phoenician, suggesting meanings such as vice or power. As Cain's wife, 
Her name may symbolize the strength or influence she exerted on the lineage started by the firstborn of Adam and Eve. At the same time, the connotation of vice might reflect the challenges and dilemmas faced by Cain and Kalima amidst the adverse circumstances of their lives, especially considering the weight of fratricide and the curse that marked Cain's existence. These interpretations enrich our understanding of the moral and social complexities that permeated the early days of humanity. After his exile, Cain encountered Avon, and the biblical narrative recounts that he founded the city of Enoch, naming it after his son. The Book of Jubilees also references this city, highlighting it as one of Cain's accomplishments following the tragic incident with Abel. Presented alongside Cain, Avon emerges as an essential link in the lineage, becoming a central figure in the events that unfold after Cain's banishment for the murder of his brother. Although the Bible does not identify Cain's wife or reveal her origin, an analysis of the Book of Genesis up to the point of Cain's banishment and his encounter with this woman suggests that there were other characters beyond Adam, Eve, Abel, and Seth. The fact that Cain found a wife and that the land was inhabited indicates that at that point in history, the human population had already expanded significantly with the presence of other women besides Eve. This context suggests that Adam and Eve's lineage multiplied rapidly and that the Bible, focusing on highlighting specific figures, does not mention all descendants immediately. The inclusion of Avon, even in secondary texts, enriches the narrative and helps us better understand the role of other figures who contributed to the propagation of the human race in its early days. A less accepted interpretation proposes the idea that, in addition to Adam and Eve's family, God might have created other human beings independently. Proponents of this theory argue that, to account for the rapid multiplication of humanity, a significant number of people would be necessary which would be difficult to achieve with only Adam and Eve's family. This perspective seeks to reconcile the biblical narrative with archaeological and anthropological evidence indicating the presence of broader human communities in ancient times. However, it is important to note that this interpretation is speculative and does not have explicit support in the biblical text. The theory arises from an attempt to explain how the human population could have expanded rapidly from an initially small number of individuals, but lacks direct support in the scriptures. The Genesis narrative focuses primarily on the story of Adam and Eve's family, without explicitly mentioning the existence of other contemporary human groups. The most accepted theory suggests that Cain could have married a sister, based on the cultural practices and context described in the biblical narrative. It is important to note that Genesis does not specify that Adam and Eve had only Cain and Abel as children. In fact, Genesis 4.1 explicitly mentions that Eve declared she had acquired a man with the help of the Lord, referring to Cain. However, there is no similar statement following the birth of Abel. The absence of an explicit mention of other children between Cain and Abel has led some scholars and theologians to speculate about the possibility that Adam and Eve had other children not mentioned in the narrative. This interpretation is supported by the idea that the Bible does not detail all of Adam and Eve's children, but only highlights those who play significant roles in the narrative. The idea that Cain could have married a sister is consistent with the cultural and historical understanding that families at that time were often larger. This interpretation is reinforced by the fact that, later in the narrative, after the incident involving Cain and Abel, there are references to other sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. For example, Genesis 5.4 states that after the birth of Seth, Adam had sons and daughters. These references suggest the existence of a broader offspring beyond the individually mentioned children. Therefore, the biblical text does not include a restrictive statement limiting Adam and Eve's offspring to only Cain, Abel, and Seth. The absence of such a limitation allows for a more flexible and open interpretation regarding the extent of Adam and Eve's family, supporting the idea that other sons and daughters could have existed and contributed to the human population of that time. It is important to highlight that, given the lack of a significant population outside Adam and Eve's family, the hypothesis that Cain married a sister appears as a quite plausible explanation for the continuation of the human lineage. In the cultural and temporal context of that era, 
marriages between siblings were still seen as acceptable and even necessary for the propagation of the human race. This interpretation considers the unique circumstances described in the biblical narrative and the absence of explicit prohibitions against sibling marriages at this early stage of history. The Bible presents various cases of characters marrying members of their own families. A notable example is Noah's family after the flood. According to the Bible, Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, had to marry within their family or with their own sisters to repopulate the earth. The lack of other available people after the flood made it necessary for Noah's descendants to marry within their own family. Another important example is Abraham marrying his half-sister Sarah. In the biblical narrative, Abraham and Sarah are described as half-siblings, sharing the same father. Marriage between half-siblings or close relatives was considered acceptable in this context. Isaac, Abraham's son, also followed this tradition by marrying Rebekah, his first cousin. Marriages between cousins were common at the time and reflected the cultural practices of the ancient society. Jacob, Abraham's grandson, married his cousins Leah and Rachel. Although these marriages between relatives may seem unusual by contemporary standards, they were acceptable within the cultural and historical context in which they occurred. It is important to note that laws against marrying close relatives, as described in Mosaic law, were established much later, approximately 2,500 years after the creation of Adam and Eve. Laws against marriage between close relatives were instituted as part of the covenant established with Moses, which outlined moral and ethical standards for the Israelite community. Until that point, marriage between relatives was a common and socially acceptable practice, reflecting the norms of the society of the time. As the human population grew, restrictions on marriage between close relatives were established in religious legislation. These incest laws were instituted by God to protect the physical and spiritual health of the Israelite community. By prohibiting sexual relations between close relatives, God set guidelines to prevent the negative consequences associated with incest, such as reducing the risk of genetic defects and health problems resulting from consanguineous mating. Chapter 18 of the Book of Leviticus provides a detailed list of prohibitions related to sexual relations including instructions against involvement with mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, nephews, nieces, and other close relatives. This theory is not based solely on speculation, but also on attempts to understand the social and cultural practices of the time, providing a possible explanation for the continuation of Cain's lineage. However, it is important to note that this interpretation is subject to variations and is debated among different religious traditions and theological groups. We would like to hear your thoughts on these interpretations. Leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. God bless and see you soon.